just came by after seeing the Taj Mahal. And one thing that we learned is that here in Accra, they don't allow any major industry because they don't want any pollution on the Taj Mahal. They want it to remain pristine. So all of the people here in this city are artisans. They do some kind of crafts. We're at a marble plant and I have Mohammed with me here. Mohammed, explain to me the type of intricate work that they do here. Good evening. Namaste. So here we are doing the same kind of work of the Taj Mahal and this work called a marble inlay work with semi-precious stones and the white marble. These are all semi-precious stones which was used in the Taj Mahal. All are real gems. There is no fake, no imitation. Rich, bright blue is called lapis lazuli. Green with sedimentary line is malachite. White shining, mother of pearl. Pale blue is called turquoise. This is called black onyx. And this is the main stone of the Taj Mahal. It glows with the touch of light. It is called cornelian. It's translucent by nature. So the craftsman hold the stones always left hand fingertips and the bow always right hand. Rotate the wheel, rub the stones against this wheel and then make petals of flower leaf birds. So this is the rose flower. There are approximately 37 pieces. So they make individually and then assemble it. So first we do the flowers and leaves, then we put the flowers on the top of the marble on the red surface and then make outline. After tracing the line, remove the stone and then gouge out the marble with the help of this chisel. One is pointed, another one is flat. Then we give the cavity 2.5 millimeter depth, like this one. After giving the cavity, now we have got a special type of glue. Same kind of glue used in the Taj Mahal, but the recipe of the glue is always secret like the recipe of Coca-Cola and KFC. <laughs> That's cute. Then we fill the glue into the cavity and then fix the gems. Semi-precious stones, one time fix, forever fix. Never ever come out like the Taj Mahal. At last, all the gems are fixed. We put some sand and water and sand it down. Red color, temporary color, it goes off and it comes again in white form. And then wash it and polish it with the waves. Wow. This is the procedure. Mohammed, that's an amazing process. Why don't we go through and you can show us some of the pieces. Okay. Okay, good. All right. Nice brown. This is so beautiful. Look at this. Got to find a place to land this fish. This looks like a good spot. Settle down. Feisty brown. Okay. As long as I don't slip into the water here. It's not that it's deep. It's that the rocks are slippery. So I'm going to use the cradle just because this is a pretty fish to talk to you and show you how nice he is. I'm going to wet it. I'm going to try to get him in the cradle so you can get a nice look at it. You know, I brought this cradle all the way from Canada, and I'm glad I did. I'm just going to move, get my footing here. It's such a nice tool, especially when you want the fish to relax. See, it's laying down nice and flat. Look at the colors of that brown trout. Isn't that a beautiful fish? It's got that nymph just in the corner of the mouth. Very easy to get the hook out, so I'm just going to switch hands here. I don't even think I need the hemostats. It was hooked perfectly right in the maxillary, so there's the hook out. Put it on my guide. Look at that pretty brown. It's going to get him in the water. And he wants to go. He's got lots of energy. See what I mean? This nice thing about the cradle. Look at it. I'm just going to suspend it down a little bit. Isn't that a gorgeous sight? Nice clear water. I'll tell you what, it is cold. About 10 minutes ago, the temperature dropped about 5 degrees. And we had a little bit of snow up on the peaks and then some rain. And now it moved through in 10 minutes, and now the temperature is about 70 degrees. So this is amazing. Cindy, I really like wearing these inflatable PFDs because they're so lightweight, especially in the summertime. What are some of the things people should know, though, if they're going to have these in their boat? Well, it's really important that people know what kind they're actually wearing because there are different types of them. This one, for instance, is a manual one, which means I would have to actually pull this cord to actually inflate it. 
um, to get the buoyancy I need if I was to fall overboard. I also have an option inside here to blow it up manually. Um, there's also different ones such as an automatic, which if you fall overboard, it would automatically inflate once it hits the water. There's also hydrostatic ones and various other ones. Um, the, the most important thing to know though about an inflatable, if you're actually wearing it as your PFD on board an open boat, like a fishing boat, it actually has to be worn to be legal. Um, so for the Canadian Coast Guard standards, you have to be wearing an inflatable PFD for it to actually count by law.